Welcome to Meet the Leaders. Hi there. We are in Hartford and everything is a buzz as everybody tries to figure out how they're going to wrap up the next couple of days before the session ends. Probably without a budget being worked out, which means more work through the month of June. I'm David Smith. Good to have you along with us today and Representative Mike Pacino of the 150th District in Greenwich. And uh, Mike, this has been quite the time. Uh, you all were in for an extended period of time on Saturday. So that overtime keeps racking up, right? Uh, <laughs> no, only kidding. Doesn't no, only work. kidding. Does it, does Nobody's it, patting their pension. Doesn't That's right. work that <laughs> way at all. Uh, not at all, in the least. A few bills got looked at and a few bills got got through you all. Um, it's been a very slow sh session from that standpoint. Yeah, some of them were discussed uh, in length, um, and then at the end they were passed temporarily, which means there was no decision made. Um, the, the issues were brought up, uh, some in the education field, some in the uh, public health fields. Um, but at the end of the day, nothing of real substance towards our budget. You know, we're, the, the House is quote on fire, and we're not really dealing with the issues. And that's the most disturbing part. We come in on a Saturday, we'll come in on a Sunday. I don't mind, but as long as we start talking about how we can get this economy and how we can get the state of Connecticut back on track. But so far, we haven't been able to come to an agreement. The speaker hasn't called any substantive bills yet. Um, and it's very frustrating. All right, to that end, there are three budgets kind of hanging fire out there. And, you know, yeah. it may end up that none of them will be the one. but. What do you see as the biggest differences between them and what, what are the sticking points that are keeping the whole thing from coming together? Well, I think on the, you know, from the governor's point of view and from the Democratic majority's point of view, they're not really looking to make the, the necessary cuts to unions uh, to uh, deal with unfunded liabilities, um, all the things that really we need to look at for the to create a foundation for the state to move forward. Um, there, and and again. The Democrats don't have all of their people in line with the direction that this their budget is going. So we've seen the blame game of, you know, well, Representative Claritas can't get our people to sit and talk to the table, but at the end of the day, you're the majority. You've got the numbers. If you can't get all of your people to vote on a particular budget, your budget, and move it forward, that's not our fault. We've got a quality budget that we've got 100% of our, our Republican Party behind. Um, that, to me, shows that we should have more say at that particular table. But because we, we are not going to bow down to the unions, because we are not going to um, look at uh, tolling, you know, or casinos or marijuana as, as a revenue stream that's acceptable, we're kind of being swept to the side. So I think they have to just say, you know what, we tried, now we have until June 30th, let's start fresh. What's behind us doesn't matter. We've really got to get something going because, again, the house is on fire. We don't have time any longer to be, uh, be you know, having the egos being played out here. Well, okay, we, we have not gotten a lot of bills passed this uh, this session. No, we have not. And uh, there, there's still time for that. I mean, they, is, yeah. and all of a sudden there's a stream of things that go through in, in 10 or 15 minutes yeah. and, and it all happens. But it's kind of the, it's kind of the sausage making and folks at home don't really have a handle on how the heck that possibly comes together. They don't have a handle. They're sitting there saying, <laughs> how are we, uh, as a legislature up here, debating uh, whether or not we're going to save the horseshoe crabs in Stratford when we've got these, uh, uh, and I just use as an example, but it's a good bill, mm -hmm. but um, we've, we've got real serious issues. You know, we have bills out there that could be called today, tomorrow, the next day, to re either repeal the estate tax or to at least bring the estate tax in line with the federal government. Uh, to deal with the unemployment compensation, um, to deal with some of these issues that really affect those people at home who are going to be voting, you know, come, uh, you know, uh, 2018. But more importantly, we don't have time to wait until then. We shouldn't be voting based on our on our campaigning. We need to start putting forward legislation right now that's going to make a difference and it's going to be impactful for the municipalities so that the municipalities can then help those residents uh, in each district. Right, without 
without a budget, though, I mean, how, how is it possible? How can you really do very much that obviously is going to cost money when you don't know how much money well, the estate tax, possibly going to come I up mean, with? I mean, changing the estate tax isn't going to cost us anything. I mean, that's going to, you know, we're going to ch change the regulations, get rid of uh, those particular things. Um, even just raising it up again to the federal standard is not going to be a, a, an incredible cost um, to the state of Connecticut. Social and Security, for example, is, was one of those areas. Sure. Um, the other is uh, giving a reserve balance for municipalities. So bring it up to, uh, you know, we, we proposed 15%. Uh, we'll deal with 11%, but give the municipalities an opportunity to have some money in their coffers, in reserves that they're not going to use for collective bargaining, that's going to be dedicated for their budgets. So these are things that we can do that are, that are common sense ideas, common sense issues. Um, and they need to be done now. We well, don't are these have the luxury. You all can come together on. We don't have the luxury. We're we are ready. We are, you know our bills have been put forward. They are on the calendar. They're on the go list. It's just a matter of whether or not the speaker and the majority party calls them to the floor of the house to be debated and to be called and to be voted upon. And it's and it gets to be very frustrating in the final two days, you know, three days I should say, um, including today, that we haven't called many of these bills that are out there. And there are some probably some good ones on the other side of the aisle as well the deal what with is the hesitancy I just don't think that they have the assurance that they have the votes and I don't think they being the majority party they don't want to put a bill out there that's not going to be a hundred percent supportive if it's their bill um, on our side I think they're looking at our bills as too radical um, they want to have more time to digest them uh, and it's an unfortunate situation that we're at right now because we're running out of time yeah, you really are. You really are running out of time as far as the bills go. The budget may well linger well beyond. Uh, may well linger children. well beyond. It's a, That's a scary situation, but I've heard that bill, uh, budgets have gone into September. Yeah. And um, I don't want to see that happen to and the state. And that's very scary for municipalities who are waiting to hear whether they're getting money from the state or are not getting money exactly, from the state. Exactly, because they're going to start planning their budgets for next year come this, this August. So. Hey, Mike, it's good to see you, my friend. Always a pleasure. You are not going to be idle. That's for sure. That's right. <laughs> you Chino, take care now. Representative from Greenwich, our guest on this edition of Meet the Leaders, as the backing and forthing continues and won't stop for the foreseeable future. That's it for Meet the Leaders. I'm David Smith.